All right, today you are going to be completing a chart on chemical and physical properties as well as another small assignment, which I'll show you in just a second. So let's go through those physical and chemical properties. This is what you're actually filling out. You've got a copy of it on Canvas for yourself. And then we're going to do this T-chart together, kind of distinguish between physical and chemical properties. Some definitions, physical properties can be observed without chemically changing the matter. The this means that, I'm sorry, my friend texted me. She asked me what I was doing this week, and I said, I'm bird learning how to bird watch. She said, can you shoot them with BB guns? She, it's funny, funny. But anyways, physical properties can be observed without changing the matter. So that means things like changing the size, changing the shape. So if you think about a piece of paper for a second, we're going to use that as our matter example. So to physically... Um, change or alter this piece of paper, I can do things like tear it in half, I could do things like ball it up, I could do things like create an origami swan, I could do things like change the color of it, I could do things like change the density of it, I could get it wet and then it would be heavier, I could change the amount of it, I could have more paper, these are things that, again, can be observed without chemically changing the matter. So these are generally things that we think about when we see something or when we observe something. So if you were going to observe, say, uh, a, card, a red cardinal bird, you could tell me that it is soft and you wouldn't be chemically changing the bird. You could tell me that it's red and you wouldn't be chemically changing the bird. You could tell me that it is made of feathers and you wouldn't be chemically changing the bird. You could feed the bird more and then you wouldn't be chemically changing it, you just make it fatter. You could change, that would change the amount of it. Uh, you could change the shape of the bird, maybe you put the wings out. That wouldn't be chemically changing the bird. We're just observing it. Chemical properties, however, are substances that um, describe how substances interact with other substances, and this means that the identity of the substances change. So generally, we'll have a chemical reaction when we observe chemical properties. Some chemical properties are like, how does this element react with air? How does this element react with water? How does this element react with any other elements? Does it form molecules? Does it stay the same? Some chemical properties examples are flammability, so can it catch on fire? Rust, or how, how easily is it for it to catch on fire? Rusting or oxidizing, does it react with oxygen? Burning also, again, does it react with oxygen in a quick way? Does it burn? Corrosive, is it acidic or very, very basic? What's the pH of it? And reactivity, how does it react with other substances? So in this case, the chemical substance is changed. We have a reaction happening when we observe chemical properties. Physical properties, there is no reaction happening. If we go back to my piece of paper example, if I have a piece of paper and I want to change the piece of paper chemically, I'm going to do things like burn it, set it on fire, put hydrochloric acid on it, and dissolve it, stuff like that. So here's the T-chart example that you are to fill out. Please um, di um, sort, sorry, these examples. So color goes under the physical property example. Texture goes under the physical property example. Melting point goes under the physical property example or the point at which the substance or element changes from a solid to a liquid. Density or the amount of matter in the molecule or substance or atom mass, or not the density, the amount of mass over volume is density, the amount of matter is just mass. Malleable, can it be hammered into sheets? Volume, how much of the substance is there? And boiling point, at what temperature does the substance turn from a liquid to a gas? And then our chemical property examples are the reactivity, how reactive is the element we know, element or substance, we know that substances like sodium and lithium as well as chlorine and fluorine are really, really reactive. However, we know that substances like xenon, uh, xenon and neon, they are not reactive at all. The compos composition, combustibility or the ability to burn, that is, does the substance, molecule, or compound 
react with oxygen in a really quick way? Will it burn? Flammability or the tendency to burn, so is it very flammable? Will it catch fire really easily? Does it take a lot for it to catch fire? The, again, that's a reaction with oxygen. The ability to rust, does it oxidize? Again, does it react with oxygen? By the way, if you wanted to know the difference between the reaction of combustibility and ability to rust, combustibility is reacting with oxygen very, very quickly. Ability to rust is reacting with oxygen over time. It's called oxidation. Acidity or how, what's the pH of the substance? Is it very, very basic, very, very acidic? Is it pretty neutral? And then the ability to react with acids. If I put an acid on the substance, is it going to react? Generally, we, the, some observations that a reaction is happening are things like bubbling, heat is being given off, a color change. Those are uh, kind of clues that a reaction is happening. So this is the first part of what you need to do today. The second part of what you need to do today is actually on Canvas. So we're going to go back to Canvas, go here, go here. So this is the first thing you're going to do the T-chart. Your second thing, which you should have already done by now if you're at this point in the lecture, you're going to create your own set of flashcards with the following properties. They can, these can be written or on Quizlet. Written is better though. Uh, if you're in class, we're going to actually write them. You are going to use the definitions provided by Ms. Bachover in this Quizlet to turn these flashcards from the game to the actual flashcard of the Quizlet. You're going to go choose study mode right here and you're going to go flashcards. And then you'll see the flashcard right here. Here's the oh, the temperature at which a solid can change to a liquid to really because sorry. it is the same for no, a specific substance. Stop. It can be used to. There we go. Okay, so here's the flashcard. That's the definition. Flip it over. Melting point. I kind of wish it would give you. Click the card to see the definition. I did that and it talked to me. That's fine. Okay, so you can flip it to go on to the next one. You go right here. There's 10 of them. You're going to make your own flashcards for each of these. I would prefer that these are written out by hand on note cards or on pieces of paper. You can take a piece of paper and cut or tear it into four pieces. That'll be better for you than doing the Quizlet because I've already made a Quizlet for you. So you'll have the ability to do this using the game or what have you. Okay, that's it. So you'll turn both in. You'll turn the T-chart in that you've completed with the fill in the blank notes and your definitions as well. All right, guys, have a great day.